All right. Maybe the best athlete out there, TJ Ellis. We talked about it at the top of the show in the countdown to the Dew Tour. Just a stellar athlete, probably the best guy out there who has yet to win a stop. Yeah, definitely. He's got some crazy tricks. He's coming off a little injury spell, but that may be all the motivation he needs to go out on these courses and just tear it up. TJ Ellis on course. Big no handed back foot there. Front flip transfer. Oh, bit of a yep. redirect and missing those last two jumps. Tough break. He struggled with that in practice. I noticed that every time he did that front flip transfer, it, t it just made him go diagonal on that left side. Remember, as Tiffany reported, he had ACL and meniscus reconstructive surgery in February of this year. Now, I don't know if too many orthopedic surgeons will say, yeah, you're good to go. Go do this. Yeah, no, they don't want you to do no-handed backflips about 12 feet above the jumps. Look at that. Big front flip transfer. Maybe just getting off course just a little bit and having to take evasive action. Another look at it in slow-mo. Look at that. There's the snap. Carries that bike around with him. And just, just, maybe just that front wheel, just when it got put down, it altered the angle of the bike and took him off course. Well, the beauty of this competition, you get three runs, we only keep your two best, so he can throw away the 41-4-4 that has him in seventh place for the time being. Brett Banase was just 16 years of age, and uh, what can you say about Mad Dog? He has been out here practicing. He's got the wounds on his face to prove it. Tiffany talked to him. Also has a big old shiner on the left shoulder. But, uh, you know, you can't keep Mad Dog off this course. Does this course suit him? What has TJ given him to work with? Oh, you know what? I mean, we, we didn't think it would suit a guy like Kyle Baldock, but it, it suits everybody. And look, he's going to go absolutely huge. Big front flip. Oh, my gosh. He nearly did it again. That is the crash that took him out in qualifying. Seems to be all right. He's kind of shaking it like is, is he pressing? You know, when I say that, we saw him in Chicago last year, and we saw him here in Portland last year. He seemed to have no cares. Just, I'm 15, I just go out there and ride my bike. Now it seems like there's a little more pressure on him, and he's, and he's pushing a little harder. No, he cares. In that interview with Tiffany, you saw that the only thing on his mind is the Duke Cup this year, and sometimes, you know, you can lift that trophy before you get it, so he needs to regroup. He needs to just pull back 10%, get up on top of the rolling, take a run through in between a couple guys, and just steady those nerves. Well, he's had a very busy year. He opened a 30,000-square-foot BMX park in his hometown of South Bend. They call it the kitchen. He used his own cash to build it. This is where it all went wrong. That has to be the highest front flip we've seen all day, and he got very, very lucky there. I would say another couple more feet, and he was going face first into the dirt. Look at the height on that front flip. It's absolutely massive, and he knows at that point that he spun it a little bit too quick for the height that he gained. So Brett Benesiewicz is up and walking. Good to see that as he makes his way back over there. Not the score he was looking for as Benesiewicz gets a 40.31. But remember, it's three runs. We only keep your two best. So here he is, the defending Duke Cup champion, all the way from Lake Orion, Michigan, at 22 years of age. He has not missed a dirt final since 2008, but now he is the hunted, the champion, the defending champion, Brandon Doss, set to take his first run. Now we've seen there's a little crack in the door. He can put a solid run down, especially after Banasiewicz going out, but Ennison has already posted a big score, but coming strong straight away, Doss on a charge. Nice double tail with 360 to finish. That is how you calm the nerves when somebody, and especially a guy like Banasiewicz, goes down in his first run. Looking back, look at this. Huge double tail whip transfer, no less. Doyle doing the single, Dosh doing the double. That's massive. Look at that big trail style 360 look back. And finishing very, very nicely with this. Double tail with 360 in super slow-mo. Look at him, kicking with the legs all the time, muscling the bike with the handlebars, and looking for that pedal, and then that landing. Dosh, that's a great score. Brandon Dosh with a beautiful touchdown on the banks of the Willamette River here at the Portland Invitational. Will it be enough, though, to put him into first place? Just short, 45-06. So it is Dennis Anderson leading the way as we go to round number two. 
We'll reset and run them again. Plus, we'll have BMX legend TJ Lavin with us when we return to Portland. Next Sunday night, Tony Romo and the Cowboys take on the high-powered San Diego Chargers. Then Thursday, September 8th, it's time to get back to football as the NFL season kicks off with the defending Super Bowl champion Packers taking on the New Orleans Saints. Back in Portland's on, on the banks of the Willamette River, and the leader right now is Dennis Ennerson. He threw down a 45.31 on his first run score. Remember, it's three runs. We only keep your two best, combine them, and we're lucky now to be joined by TJ Lavin. Not only is the course designer here in Portland, but a guy who has endured quite a bit over the last 10 months. TJ, I can't tell you how great it is to see you here, upright, working with us today, and a, and a beautiful course. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. It's good to be here for sure, and uh, this is my home. You know, I love the dirt jumps, and. Uh, to be a part of it like this, it feels really good. Tell us how the recovery is going. How are you as far as what percentage you are as being 100%? Uh, I'm, I'm probably like, I would say 85%, you know, but I could live the rest of my life how I am today, you know. I'm, I'm fine. Um, it's just that I want to get 100 at least, um, maybe 120, just get a little bit better than I was. So I'm doing uh, lots of yoga and lots of Pilates and just trying to put it together. You feel like calling some runs with us? Yeah, let's do it. All right, TJ Lavin, here's Jai Tui dropping in for his second run. Yeah, this is one of my favorite guys in the whole world. And people underestimate no foot of can can backflip like that. I mean, that to me is one of the hardest tricks to control your bike like that. Wow, huge triple with that. Good, good, solid run for Jay. You know, I know he got a 43-13 in his first one, but he just, uh, it, it's building all the time, you know. He's the first guy out. Obviously, the judges are getting accustomed. You know, they, they're seeing great tricks out there, but they've got nothing to base it off. But don't take anything away from that huge no foot can can bike flip straight to the finish triple tail whip jive you know he's the complete package like a lot of these australian kids yeah doing a triple tail whip to me is like a video game trick you can't even comprehend bringing your bike three times around like that it's just it's hard enough to do one tail whip and catch a pedal sweet but to do three is just unheard of i can't believe it you designed this course, TJ, and you talked about having it being a real dirt riders course. What do you mean by that for the folks at home that aren't familiar with BMX dirt? Um, I, I think it's like uh, there's there's foam pit kids and there's dirt jumpers and then there's like kids that do both. And uh, this really is a course for dirt jumpers and kids that do both. If you never touch touch dirt in your life, you're gonna have a hard time for sure. I mean, you know, going off the first few rides already, you know, you've caught some people out just with the rollers alone. I mean, even your boy Cam White. Cam, <laughs> White. Cam White got crushed on the second jump. I mean, obviously he's cursing you right now for putting those rollers in. <laughs> no, Cam, Cam can do rollers all day long. He does them at my house. But like like you just saw Colton Satterfield, he, he nose bonked that second roller right there. Didn't have enough speed to do what he wanted to on the first jump, which is kind of the idea is, is to separate the guys that really just work on tricks and don't ride trails to, from the guys that ride trails. So. He did that, he could have gained his speed back if he knew how to manual rollers really well, and, and, and he would have cleared it easy, but he had to do just a regular bar spin instead. Colton Satterfield, the 21-year-old from Orem, Utah, came out with his first run and threw down a 40.56. Wait for a second run score, but remember, it's three runs, we keep your two best, combine them, and that's how we'll determine our champion here at the Portland Invitational. Colton coming with that opposite double tail whip over the last set. I mean, these kids are just getting ridiculous right now, but, uh, you know, the course does seem to be catching them out. Is it giving them a chance to hit their biggest tricks? Um, it, it, it is if you're a dirt rider, that's for sure. Um, you know, it, if you have no problems with the rollers, if you have no problems with the up, pump, jump, long and low, uh, then you should have no problem doing your tricks, you know, doing whatever you need to do. But but uh, speed is also a factor. So like if you do sloppy tricks where you're, you know, you're ball riding every trick and, and doing your thing, it's no bueno. So <laughs> I don't like that stuff. So I like, right. the, I like when you land your tricks. 43 picks up on that as we move on from Colton Satterfield to Cameron White. Now he is rocking the full face helmet. And you, you've said, if you come right at my place, I want a full face helmet. Why is that? Is it all because of the accident you had less than a year ago? Yeah, it is uh, actually. I mean, it, it's it's something that that's very important and it's very easy to get used to. I mean, people trip out all the time, but you say, hey, 
How many championships has Jamie Bester won? Six. Okay, he's full face helmet in all of them. Thank you very much. Enough said. Case closed. Well, here is Cameron White, the 27-year-old Australian, now living in Las Vegas, Nevada, rocking the full face helmet at TJ Lavin's place. And uh, I think he's got what it figured out. Nice. Cam on course right now. Beautiful 720 over that last yeah. set. That's what, what TJ run. was looking for. What a run for Cam White. And if you weren't a believer before, there you go. There's some proof for you. <laughs> I mean, you have to have, have spot on sense to know what you're doing in a flip whip. You and I both know that. And then you catch that out with a nice 720 at the end, so. That's true. Look at that big flip whip to get things started. Just landed it perfect. Going straight to that front flip, this time getting it right. That front flip, definitely something that he throws in after the flip whip because he can land a little funny and still make the second set because the front flip makes you travel so far. For sure, but then coming at the finish with this 720. Big trick for Cam White. I don't see Cam as a 720 kind of guy, TJ. You know what, he, he hasn't been before, but he, he really has been doing a lot of them lately, and he's been looking really good and nice corked out sevens. In the foam pit? Nope. <laughs> yeah, he he's a dirt guy. He's, 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 a, he's a dirt, dirt guy. guy. He's born and raised in the dirt. 44-13 for nice. Cameron White, so he'll be able to drop that 40.69. We talk about the full face helmet. TJ has advocated it. Jamie, you ride it. What is the difference? You Do you ever ride a half shell? Uh, you know what? I do, but I've had some unfortunate accidents in half shells. Uh, they do give you a great sense of just being aware of everything. But if you ride in a full face for long enough, you'll get that same presence. It's no different. It's just what you're into. All right, this is Anthony Napolitan, 25 years of age, out of State College, Pennsylvania, on for his second run. Nice backflip. Oh. oh. Yeah, Anthony, not looking too good. I don't know what <laughs> happened. Uh, his, his, rollers, his roller skills seem to be there, but for some reason, he keeps ended up messing up on that first set. So that was a little bit of, of an overshoot and uh, of rotation and that's it, that's it, there you go. For Anthony Napolitan, it comes down to the third and final run. Remember, it's two scores, we keep the best two. We'll be back to the Willamette River and the Portland Invitational after this. Back for the Portland Invitational here in beautiful Portland, Oregon. Stop number two of the Dew Tour. And a reminder, experience killer bass while you play at Dew Tour with Sony headphones. You can get those at allyrideshop.com. We're in the midst of the second run of three here. This is BMX Dirt Final alongside TJ Lavin, JB Bestwick, and Tiffany Simons. I'm Todd Harris, glad you can join us on a beautiful day here in the Rose City. Fans have turned out in force as the Dew Tour has come here for the seventh year in a row. The only stop in the Dew Tour where the Dew Tour has been every single year. As we move on to Ben Wallace, 44-19 on his first run for the 24-year-old from Bournemouth, England. Yeah, I'm really stoked on this kid at the minute. He's coming to fruition very, very nicely, and he's got some powerful tricks. Look for Ben to get things started really quickly on that first hit. How about this? He makes his first Dew Tour final, and he's got a TJ Lavin design course. He better be stepping it up. Oh, definitely. Look at that power move straight away. Double tail whip over that second set. No hander, straight to this. Oh! I so knew close. it was coming. Look back to late down with 360. That's a Ben Wallace original. Just super styly, but big at the same time. I was just going to say, he's kind of a mixture between uh, uh, Corey Bowen and, and a guy that spends a lot of time in the foam pits and getting some trick style. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's got some great style. Look at that double tail whip over that second set. Paying no attention to that roller and using it for its speed. Getting that no-hander in over the third set and coming with what we've seen so far, the biggest move of the contest. It's this, it's a look back 360, and then he straightens up, kicks the bike in the downside tail with 360 to get back on. I definitely feel third run out, that'll be a make. Yeah, that's that's something that you only do lake jumping or in the foam pit. Like, <laughs> it has no business on dirt jumps. But he does it. We had to throw sick. that in super slow-mo to show you everything that was going on in that jump. 43.56. Wow. Kyle Baldock will be the next man to drop in, the 20-year-old from Australia. For more on him, we check in with Tiffany. 
Guys, Kyle just told me he's changing up his second run completely with a surprise trick on that first hit. He has not practiced it yet. He's coming out and throwing it cold. He told me, I don't even know if I'm going to make it past the first one. So we'll see. Tiffany